The Buffalo Bills get a much needed win, taking down the Jets 32 to 6 this week on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You are now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Bills Mafia, welcome in, and thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fan Base Podcast Network. Um, if you guys aren't already doing it, check out the Fan Base Podcast Network, all kinds of podcasts, dropping all kinds of days of the week, um, just a bunch of great shows on the network, so go ahead, check it out. Um, I do thank you for joining me here, and we did it, guys. We're we're back on track for the Super Bowl. <laughs> ah. Hopefully, but just riding a little bit high right now. Um, I'm going to make this a quick episode. I'm, I'm still feeling under the weather from last week. Um, but yeah, this game just felt, it felt good. It's, um, the team has had its struggles this year in particular on offense. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways that, um, the Bills could have come out with a win in Joe Brady's, you know, offensive coordinating debut for the bills um that it could still kind of feel like yeah are we back on track like what are we looking like and you know granted it's one week right and as teams start to get you know a little bit more film on how he's calling the game uh all that type of stuff um there, there may be some challenges that need to be overcome um but overall just a really great day from the offense today um Josh Allen had pretty much a perfect game and this is and you know this is going against a Jets defense that you saw what it, they did to us week one um you've seen what they've done to all kinds of elite quarterbacks this year um that defense is pretty much giving everybody fits um so I mean Josh Allen 20 of 32 275 yards three touchdowns one sec he does have the interception on his uh on his sheet there um i don't think any of us care about this one <laughs> i almost cared about this one when it started uh started getting returned pretty far uh, right before half uh, kind of an unnecessary play but i do it when i'm playing madden so <laughs> um didn't end up hurting us so you know they're talking a lot on the broadcast about like you know josh allen's uh, his turnovers, his propensity to throw interceptions. Um, this is this is part of why I, I do the eyeball test with some things like turnovers. Um, because we see a turnover like that and people are going to be like, oh, there's another turnover from Josh Allen in this game. And like the turnover didn't, the interception didn't matter. Um, it's still going to be, you know, when they want to have the conversation about, oh, I don't care about Josh Allen's touchdowns. Let's look at his interceptions. Whatever. I, I don't care about that. Uh, what I do care about is the wins. And um, we've we've seen it all over the place, all over social media, like analytics saying that this offense was like right there, but it, it just hasn't been happening. You didn't believe it. I didn't believe it, but the numbers were saying it. And today just felt different. And it felt like kind of everything that we've been thinking, you know, it was this close and it, it happened today. Um, now, I don't know how much of that is um, Joe Brady calling the game differently uh, versus Ken Dorsey. Uh, this is right after the game. So I'm, I'm going to, you know, watch the game, take another look at it. Um, but just from from the first run through of the game, it felt like it had a lot more flow to it. Um, when you're talking about the balance with the run and pass game, it, it wasn't, you know, the same, the same rotation of plays every time it wasn't, you know, Oh, we're, you know, in second and long, let's do the shotgun run there. There was some creativity. Um, we saw a lot of, uh, David Edwards being used as like that second tight end, putting that big boy in motion and everything. Um, Thought the line did a, a great job in the run game. Um, I, th I think they gave up a little bit more pressure than we've been seeing on Josh Allen this year. Um, but also, like I said, that's that's a great defense right there. Um, in the run game, James Cook continues to be electric. Um, 
17 carries, 73 yards, um, getting involved with the passing game as well, adding um, three catches, 29, 29 yards, and obviously the touchdown there. Um, and just in general, um, Latavius Murray, 10 carries, 35 yards. That's one that's like not eye popping numbers on the stat sheet, but Latavius Murray was brought in. We thought to be, you know, kind of that short yardage guy, um, the third and one, third and two goal line stuff. Um, so it didn't have to be Josh Allen all the time. And his numbers aren't going to be sexy on, on the stat sheet most of the time. Um, but a lot of those carries that he had were for first downs, keeping the keeping the chains moving. And it, he rumbles for <laughs> he rumbles for a lot more than I, I think he's going to do most of the time. Um, how about Ty Johnson in this game? Uh, somebody that, you know, I forget is on the team sometimes. Uh, maybe you guys have too. You had to kind of do a double take to see, you know, who that was out there. But, you know, he talked in the offseason about being blindsided, wasn't expecting to get cut by the Jets. Um, came in and he, <laughs> he wanted to have a revenge game. Um on a fourth down that the bills went for it um not only does he convert it he scurries right down the sideline with no room for error there um takes it for a 28 yard touchdown um great play glad to see that from him it's uh, you know getting contributions from all the running backs today and that was one of the things that i really liked in this game is the Jets have that good defense. They have strong safeties. They have, you know, the reigning defensive rookie of the year and Sauce Gardner at cornerback. Um, this is the type of game where you got to get creative and beat them in different ways. Um, so just just looking at how the ball was spread around today. Um, love the game that we saw from Kim, Kincaid. Um, six catches on seven targets. Uh, puts up 46 yards. It's a game where your guy, Stefan Diggs, you know, he wasn't the focal point of the offense. And we've seen so much this year of Steph Diggs being able to put up McDonald's numbers, but it not translating to a win. Um, here's kind of the opposite of like, okay, you're going to, you're going to put all these assets. You're going to, you know, make sure you're covering Steph Diggs. Okay. We're going to, we're going to find other players that are going to beat you. And, guy Khalil Shakir uh week after week he's starting to make more and more of an impact um we talk about for years now we've really been struggling with yards after catch um he hauls in that that 81 yard touchdown uh there's like four separate times on that play that I was like "Ooh, nice play he's gonna get tackled and he had some nice moves with the ball in his hand uh I'd say that touchdown was the run after catch was 90% of the reason that that touchdown exists. A lot of players aren't scoring on that. Um, so he was somebody I was really excited to see. And he's been emerging over the last few weeks. And I, I think he's earned some more touches. Um, but I do want to talk about, you know, kind of on the, on the downside of this receiving game is who we didn't see getting the ball. Right. And, uh, we've talked about Gabe Davis so much on this pod podcast, you know, all across Bills, Bills Mafia. Uh, I know there's a lot of things that aren't going to show up on the stat sheet that Gabe Davis does. I know they like to use him. You know, he moves in and is almost like an inline blocker. Sometimes they use him in run looks for blocking. Um, to me, being a number two receiver in a contract year with that C on your jersey. Um, and, you know, granted, it, it it doesn't end up mattering in this game. We we win very comfortably. But this was, I mean, easily could be like the biggest game of the season. If you, if you lost today, it was another division loss. It was another conference loss. It was, you know, it, it just keeps piling up. This is a game that w was about as much of a must win as you can have in November. Um, Gabe Davis, not even targeted. Um, don't really have much else there. I mean, that 
uh, I'm I'm glad that these ancillary weapons are stepping up. I I loved Khalil Shakir coming out of the draft. I thought he looked good towards the tail end of last season. I think he's looked good in his in his touches this year. Um, I think it's time for him to get more looks. And and I know you're not gonna you're not gonna fully remove Gabe Davis as the number two right now. Um, he he has a big role in this offense. Um, in the passing game, though, the emergence that we're seeing from Kincaid and Shakir, they're having consistently good hands. I I want them to get as many pass catching opportunities as possible. I um, already talked about the offensive line a bit here. Do just want to give a little bit of love to Deion Dawkins. Um, I feel like it's hard to like especially after the first watch, you know, just shout out offensive linemen. You, you got to be following the ball around, whatnot. Um, I think there's a lot of talk about Deion Dawkins just kind of being average. And uh, I don't know, man, just some of the plays today, just the way he's keeping that sign clean. And, and he took a, a holding call or two. One of them was absolute shit, but uh, here we are. Um, but I thought Deion Dawkins really stood out on the offensive line of just really taking care of business. Um, so good job overall, you know, only allowing one sack on Josh Allen. Like I said, it, it did seem like there was a little bit of struggling in pass protection, um, something I'll have to take another look at. Um, like I said, that the, the Jets defense is very good. Um, we also know that Josh Allen likes to <laughs> run himself into pressure sometimes. Um, so we'll take another look at that, but overall, you know, allowing one sack on the day, you're going to take that most weeks. Um, coming back on the other side of the break, I do want to break down the defense and what is coming up next for the bills. Stick around. Hey, this is brother bill. Now back to the show. Bills Mafia, welcome back in, and thank you for joining me on this week's episode. Um, if you've made it this far, you're enjoying the show, hit the like button, share it, subscribe, make sure you're not missing any, any episodes. Um, we're dropping every Monday. Um, make sure you're checking out the website, wanderingbuff.com. Um, Jake's putting out some sweet t-shirt designs. Just, just really well done website. Check it out if you got a minute. Um want to come back and talk about the defense here and this is this is for me kind of in this game easy to overlook to an extent um just with how bad the jets offense has been this year and and i get that the defense has to be who's put in front of them and you know we see a quarterback change from the jets um no real change in there um but allowing six points to any team in the NFL, um, that's it's not easy to do. And that's that's a real big win there. Um, and this is kind of going with what we've seen from this defense um, throughout this kind of rough stretch the Bills have had. The, the defense really outside of one game has been the majority of the reason that we're staying in these games, the offense hasn't been able to, you know, keep things going and the defense is giving them chance after chance after chance. And that's why these games have been, you know, one score games. Uh, the, the, the phrase that's been floating around bills mafia that uh, it, it's kind of become this trigger word, you know, the trigger phrase because McDermott, you know, loves to overuse these phrases. But he's talked so much about complimentary football and it, it's become like this this negative thing but to me when he's talking about complimentary football he's talking about what we saw today um offense defense special teams all playing together all helping each other out and in you know winning in all three phases of the game that's complimentary football special teams was good today outside of you know the we had a missed pat from from bass and we give up the the fake punt conversion um but out, outside of like those small things it was good games from all the units combined um biggest thing i don't like about this game is as we see more injuries um uh, which for god's sake when is it going to stop on defense you know i think 
I think McDermott has a very good scheme. Uh, I I think I think this is the type of scheme that's supposed to be designed to kind of transcend the players, right? Um, but you can only you can only take this so far. Um, we'll have to see what happens with a couple of these injuries, but um, Tyler Rapp leaves in an ambulance, so hopefully we're hearing some good news about that soon. Um, Dane Jackson left. I believe he is ruled out with a concussion there. Um, it, it's just they're, they're piling up so much and can't really sustain too many more injuries to this team. I want to talk about Razul Douglas. Obviously, we brought him in at the trade deadline, and you know he's been looking pretty good through a couple games. Um, this game was fantastic for him. Uh, this Bills defense that hasn't been able to get an inter- interception since uh, for six weeks. Uh, last interception came from Miami. Um, he comes away from this game with two interceptions. I uh, believe he had that forced fumble as well. Um, just I, I put this up on Twitter. Uh, you know, Tredavious White is one of those heart and soul players of this defense. Uh, one of those you know, just consistently good players for you. It's not easy to replace that player midseason. Um, going out and getting Douglas, it, it's it been more than I could have expected Douglas to come in and, and affect the team. Um, I got a buddy who's a Packers fan that, you know, he, he was excited about Razul Douglas. He wasn't excited about him coming to the Bills and uh he texted me during the game and and he said uh whatever you whatever you've given us for Razul Douglas, I want more. Uh, I a lot of people were saying, you know, a third round pick was kind of a high compensation for for Razul Douglas. I I didn't really think it was at the time and for the returns you're getting from him right now, I I can't can't say that it was too much compensation um looking at at the defensive line um pass rush was buzzing all over the place today um ed oliver was playing with his hair on fire the entire game um i I think he's one of the guys that you know if you're kind of scoreboard scouting you might not think that he's having the effect that he's having on these games but he's been an absolute problem in the middle of this defense um you know the fact that he shows up on the stat sheet with one sack like it's it's criminal um just did a a really good job wrecking their offense up the middle forcing balls early um heating up the quarterback making them drop um making them pull the ball down and, and move around and helping those defensive ends get get to the quarterback get home um and that, that leads me right into Leonard Floyd. You know, as much as I can talk about Razul Douglas being, you know, this a, a great deadline acquisition, um, I think we talk about Floyd as a as a free agent signing a lot. And I'm not sure we talk about him enough. Um, two and a half sacks on the day. He's having an absolutely stellar season. Um, I'm, I'm good for... <laughs> announcing an extension on him when whenever the bills want to do it the the sooner the better um but i I would love to see him stick around kind of long term here um just overall good day from from the defensive line my my one concern here would be and and this one's hard for me i don't want to be like you know guy who continues talking about von miller um I know he's coming back from an ACL and he's a little bit older and he's not even a year removed from it. I I understand that. I know that he has to ramp up and he's not going to be the Von Miller that we're used to immediately. I'm, I'm fine with all those things. I accept all those things. At the same time, if he's not going to be who Von Miller is, who we expect Von Miller to be, um, just move him down in the rotation a little bit. Just give some of the snaps to the other guys. I mean, Shaq Lawson was in the backfield all game, heating up the quarterbacks. Um, just talked about Floyd, you know, two and a half sacks. Uh, Groot, 
you go down the depth chart here, even um, Kingsley Jonathan at the end of the game um, was was looking like he had some juice. Um, I'm not saying, you know, bench Miller. I'm not saying cut him down to like five snaps or bring him in in garbage time. I just don't think that he needs to be the first guy off the bench right now or the first guy, you know, starting out there. I think you can you can dial him back and and if he's not 100% ready and he's still ramping up just just drop him back a little bit. That's all. Um I just think there's there's guys that are out playing him right now and I understand the player, I understand the name, I understand the contract. I understand wanting him to be ramped up and ready for the postseason. I think you can still do all of that and you can get him where you want him to be if and when we make it to the postseason um, without kind of taking snaps away from the other guys at this point. AJ Epinesa, that's the name I was forgetting in there. Um, he, he's been having a stellar season himself. Um, so yeah, that that's really my, my only gripe. Um, I guess kind of defensively here. Um, I think the secondary played great today. Um, we'll get to Jordan Poyer's interception. Um, but th this is another one, you know, I, I'm not going to put all of my stock into this game. You know, it is low energy as we've been as frustrated as we've been with the bills, um, for like the last four or five weeks. Um, this one win against the jets on offense, defense, whole team wise, it, it's not going to erase all that for me. Do I feel better today? Um, than I felt in the past few weeks? Yes. Um, do I think, you know, kind of with the landscape of the AFC, just how many teams are right in that mid range? Do I, do I feel okay about our chances of making the playoffs, maybe ripping off some wins in a row? Yeah. I, I feel like it could happen. Um, and, and I was getting pretty close to the point of, you know, not feeling like that last week. Um, but yeah, the, the secondary playing against, you know, that group of receivers and those quarterbacks. Um, I really would have only been concerned if they gave up a ton of stuff this game. Um, so, so I guess they, they kind of could have only gone down in my book that they weren't going up in this game. I wasn't going to be, you know, more impressed with them that they shut down Zach Wilson and Alan Lazard, if that makes sense. Um, Garrett Wilson is a tremendous receiver with kind of this bringing in all of Roger's guys um, for Roger. I think they did themselves quite a disservice to this team. Um, you know, Lazard and Cobb might be Roger's guys, but they're not like these real game changing um, weapons in the NFL at this point. Um, that I don't even remember seeing Randall Cobb out there. Um, and, you know, you you shipped Elijah Moore out of town. That's a whole separate conversation. Maybe he you know wanted to leave, whatever. Um, but yeah, the 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 defense shutting down this receiver core that it it keeps me feeling good about them, and and that's about it. Um, the last thing I really want to talk about here is this is something that I, I don't want it to feel like it only gets brought up in losses and it's you know this go-to excuse this complainy pants sad sack blame the refs um i I've, I've talked in the past about how i, I never like to be in in sitting in, in this chair after a loss you know blaming the refs i think you know it's on you if you let the game go down to you know a call or two from the refs deciding whether you win or lose um, and today, today is my example of that. And today the bills did enough in all areas of the ball that despite getting screwed out of a couple of calls that I think should have won our way, we can still sit here talking about a win. And that's kind of my stance on officiating every week. It just feels much different in a loss. Um, it's much more, it's, it's much more difficult to stomach in a loss, but we didn't get any more or less screwed by the refs in this game than any other week this season. And it's not all that different than it's happening all across the league. Um, I talked about this last week, two weeks ago. There's a, there's an 
uh, officiating problem in the NFL. It's it's bad. Um, but it, it it it's a blanket statement. It's bad across the league. So you you can't you can't expect to just you know be able to complain about it going against you um, and not the rest of the league. It's happening everywhere. You have to play good enough. You have to know that you might get screwed on a couple calls and you have to put no doubt into your victories that you're going to win. That's what the Bills did today. There was the um, the fumble recovery by Razul Douglas. They were, they were pretty quick on that whistle. Um, the TV broadcast didn't show as many replays as I'd like, but it, it looked an awful lot like he got that lateral out, lateral out pretty quick and that was Micah Hyde touchdown. Um, now, you know, once the whistles start blowing like that, was anybody pursuing him? Um, whatever. That to me was another touchdown on the board that the refs took back. Um, didn't really end up mattering the defense, you know, forces upon anyways. Um, but you know, if that's a, you know, if that's a game where the bills are down 23, 20, you know, coming down the stretch and we, you know, got that fumble return for a touchdown and it gets taken off the board and we lose 23 20 that's what we have to talk about all week um and then there was the jordan poyer interception i'm calling it an interception because it was um i think the nfl gets in their their own way too much with the technology and the the ability to overanalyze everything um whatever you want to say it, the turf helped them secure the ball i don't give a shit um he caught the ball, two hands under it, pinned to his chest. I uh, I don't know. <laughs> to me, it's really hard on any play that looks like that to say the the ground didn't help him maintain possession because he landed on the ground. But <laughs> there there's nothing else he could do. Um, but that's that's my overwhelming point with the officiating. Um, you're going to see that one go against you a lot. And it doesn't matter how fired up we are, how mad we think, how mad we are because the ref screwed us. Uh, we've had, we've had calls like that. We've had plays like that, that we disagreed with throughout this season that we're sitting here talking about being screwed. And we, and we lost those games. There's enough team. There's enough talent on this team that if you get in a situation where the ref where the refs can decide the game for you, that's on you. Um, and that's all I really got on officiating. Um, I talked about that. That that's kind of my stance on officiating in general. Uh, I'll probably talk about it again. I, I'm just I'm sick of talking about officiating. Um, I think the NFL really needs to take a good hard look at that because, uh, yeah, the officiating's kind of ruining the game a little bit. Um, but anyways, um, Bill's kind of back on track here. Still a lot of football to be played. Um, look, let, let's call it what it is. This is a bad Jets team that's kind of overperformed this year and was hanging in there for a while. And, you know, I'm remembering how we all felt when we lost to them week one and like how pathetic it was that we lost to the Jets and Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Um, so I'm kind of taking that same energy for this win. Um, I'm really glad for the win. I'm really excited that, you know, we are able to get a big offensive output. You know, the offense looked better. It looked less in a funk. I saw Josh Allen smiling. I feel like I haven't seen that very much this year. Um, all that. I'm very excited for all that. I feel like if that can be sustained then this is the team that can rattle off some wins and get hot at the right time and make the postseason and maybe make some noise there um where this team was looking pretty dead in the water a couple weeks ago um all that to say how we felt pathetic after losing to the jets week one i'm i'm i said it at the top of the show but i was joking <laughs> i'm not jumping right back into you know the bills are going to win the super bowl this year uh it was a good win we got to go one game at a time. We still have a hell of a remaining schedule left, and we still have the very little wiggle room that we've left ourselves with. Um, I want to talk about it in wins, talk about it in losses. 
still coming up on the schedule. We got Philly before the bye. Um, coming out of the bye, we still have to play Dallas, Kansas City. Um, you got Miami again at the end of the year. Um, you got the Patriots. Hopefully that's, you know, a fluff game left on the schedule, but we have lost to them this season. Um, this one win against the Jets isn't going to make me forget that. Um, and you also got the Chargers, um, who are kind of a perennial underperforming team, but they also are a team that has all kinds of talent on that team that can make you have a bad time any week. So um, it's one game right now. We're going to enjoy this uh, 24 hours here, and we're on to a, a hell of a matchup coming up in Philly. Um, not going to be an easy game. It's going to be a real, real good measuring stick of, of where we are with some of these changes and are these changes for real um, a defense that's just absolutely decimated with injuries going to have to hold up to a really electric offense that can beat you in all kinds of ways. They can run, they can throw beat you with multiple receivers um, and a good defense too. So huge test coming up against Philly. Um, we will be here to break that one down with you. Um, as always, I thank you again for joining me on this episode. Um, we do ask that you like, share, subscribe if you've enjoyed the show at all. Um, it does help us out tremendously to be able to keep this going. Um, want to shout out Jake for all the work that he does, making sure these podcasts come out, make sure my audio sounds okay. Not much you can do to help my voice this week. I do apologize. <laughs> Still feeling a little under the weather. Um, but yeah, want to thank you guys all for being here and we will talk to you next week after the Eagles game. As always, go Bills. Go Bills.